Boone. Township of Parsippany Foothills Hills Township Council meeting uh, July 9th, 2020. Uh, meeting is called to order by the Township Clerk at uh, 410 p.m. The agenda of this special meeting to the extent known is as follows. Uh, potential adjustment of the water and sewer rates and uh, personnel matters related to the finance department. Uh, formal action may or may not be taken. Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in accordance with the requirements of the open public meetings law by filing notice in the office of the township clerk and by posting the meeting notice on the bulletin board at the municipal building on July 6, 2020, where it has remained posted since that date. Copies of this notice was transmitted to the daily record on July 6, 2020, and faxes Star Ledger and various other newspapers and local radio stations on July 6, 2020. At this time, I would like to ask everyone to please stand for the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, the Supreme Republic for which it stands, for which one nation, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty, justice, and justice. Okay, uh, at this time, I'm going to go into the roll call. Mr. Cariffi? Here. Ms. Grignani? Here. Ms. McCarthy? Here. Ms. Peterson? Here. Mr. DePiro? Mr. DePiro? You may be on mute. <laughs> Mr. DePiro? Here. Uh, also in attendance are Mayor Michael Soriano, Business Administrator Keith Kazmark, Township Attorney Jim Lott, Township Clerk Ed Madden, and CFO Ann Kuchin. Um, I have a quorum at this time. Council President, may I begin? Please. Okay. Uh, we are going to go into reports. Uh, first, I want to start with Mayor Michael Soriano. I have no report, Clerk. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, next, I would like to go into uh, Mr. Business Administrator Keith Kazmark. Thank you, Clyde, and I just want to thank the council members for taking the time uh, this afternoon uh, to address two important topics that we have for us uh, with regard to the um, rate structure for both our sewer and water utility, in addition to um, this interview tonight with um, the CFO candidate that I believe will be the recommendation of the administration, but we wanted the council to have the opportunity uh, to meet the individual uh, before we move forward with that formality. Uh, the other thing I just wanted to address with the council, um, and I want to first apologize to those I have not spoken to. Um, Frank Cahill was faster than I was in getting to you folks today. Uh, but as I informed Mayor Soriano yesterday, I've been approached about assuming the administrative responsibilities in Woodland Park uh, by two of my council members. Our 15 year administrator clerk is retiring at the end of the month, and he, uh, the town has gone out and solicited resumes and advertised the position. Uh, the council found a suitable candidate for the municipal clerk's position that they have offered the position to. Uh, however, they were not comfortable with um, appointing a clerk slash administrator and therefore asked me to consider assuming those responsibilities. After a lot of thought um, and twisting and turning, as I told Councilwoman Gragnani, um, I made the determination uh, to, uh, to accept their offer. Uh, but I just want to say to Mayor Soriano and all five members of the council uh, that I appreciate your faith and your confidence in me in almost these last two years. Uh, it's been a pleasure working with you. We may not always have agreed on every particular issue, uh, but I always felt that there was a level of mutual respect um, and an effort to try to cooperate on some tough issues between myself uh, and all six elected officials here in Parsippany. Uh, so I want to appreciate the opportunity to uh, have served here. It was certainly an opportunity to take on uh, the responsibilities of a larger municipality uh, with a large population and a vast amount of employees. Uh, it's certainly been an experience that I value and appreciate the opportunity to have had. Um, and um, once the formalities in Woodland Park uh, are set, which I expect to happen on, on July 22nd, uh, then I'll formalize with the mayor uh, a formal uh, resignation date. Uh, but I am here for transition. Uh, I told the mayor whatever he needs as far as uh, trying to help 
find a su successor in addition to um, any support that he needs in transition. Um, and I could even stay on uh, beyond my resignation date uh, to just help facilitate that transition. Uh, so that offers to the mayor and also to the members of the council. So that's what I have, Mr. Clerk. Well, just as a comment from me, uh, sorry to see you go, Keith. I wish you luck on your future endeavors. I appreciate that, Mike. I really do. And it was uh, it was a pleasure working with all of you. Keith. Yes. Loretta, you're on mute. Go ahead. There you go. Okay. There you go. All right. As I, uh, Loretta, before you start, before you start, I just want to remind everyone, please mute if you're not speaking because we're getting a feedback. Am I on mute now or no? No, you're not. You're not. Okay. As I mentioned this afternoon, Keith, Adam and I wish you the very best in your future position. Thank you, Loretta. Tell Adam we're going to catch a Giants Bears game together. Yes. <laughs> Anybody else from council? Keith, I just want to echo the same thing. Uh, it's 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 been a pleasure working. Same for for me, Keith. I've really enjoyed the time uh, you've spent here. You know, working with us on these uh, many issues. Thank you very much. Thank you. All of you. Keith, what's your last I think that um, your leadership in cross aisle conversations has been really, it, we're going to miss it a lot. I think uh, I will miss that most of all. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Paul, Janice, and Emily. Appreciate that. Uh, Mike, I think you asked me what my final date will be, um, what my last day will be. Uh, I don't have that formalized yet because the ordinance that needed to be introduction, introduced in Woodland Park for this to happen uh, was introduced last night, which is why I wanted to be forthcoming with you folks today. Uh, it will not be adopted until the 22nd, uh, and there'll be an appointment resolution that accompanies the adoption of the ordinance. Uh, so once that is complete, then I'll, I'll formalize a letter and I'll make sure you folks know uh, what the date structure looks like. Okay, thank you. Colette, any more reports or do we want to move towards the... Uh, uh, well, I just wanted to see if the township attorney had anything to say. Because he had a report. No thank you. Okay. Uh, so now that we have uh, no reports, uh, we are going to be moving right along under the ordinances for discussion. At this time, uh, there is a consultant named uh, Robert who will be also uh, joining this discussion. So with that being said, I would like to open the floor up to uh, the panelists, the council, and to Rob. Sure. Ryan, is Rob in the meeting? Uh, I'm in the meeting. Hi, everyone. Uh, Rob, Keith uh, Gasmark. Um, I just want to introduce Rob. Uh, Rob has been our point of contact uh, with the Wilcots firm, uh, who we engaged and who and I did a number of months ago in order to uh, facilitate the creation of a report when it comes to utility finances and our rate structure moving forward. As I pointed out in my July 1st memo to the council, uh, we have not raised rates with regard to sewer and water since 2007 and 2006, respectively. Um, and at this point, Rob will walk you through the analysis that he and his colleagues have done for the township uh, to talk a little bit about what we need the rate structure to look like moving forward in order to make sure that we don't put the utilities in jeopardy um, when it comes to the amount of surplus and operating uh, expenses that we need to conduct business with sewer and water. So, Rob, I'll turn it over to you. And I would just ask everybody who is not speaking to put themselves on mute because we are receiving some feedback. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Keith. Um, 
So we were approached by the township um, with the issue that both the water and sewer fund were significantly um, uh, losing funds and depleting year by year. Um, and then they, of course, they asked us to come in, take a look at these funds, take a look at the existing rate structure. Um, what we found is that um, uh, the, the cause of this rapid depletion on both sides uh, is uh, it was twofold. Um, uh, we we saw that the operating costs year to year were rain, were increasing anywhere between six to eight percent um, over the past number of past five years. However, the uh, the water rates had remained fairly static. Um, additionally, we were transferring funds annually from the both the water and sewer funds to. Uh, uh, help fund the, uh, the current fund budget. Uh, the result, uh, how we see it, is we are on path to have these have both funds uh, nearly or completely depleted by either sometime next year or the year after or the the following year. Um, what we what we did is we prepared two rate study reports, and we're proposing a an initial 39% increase in 2020 to both the water and sewer rates, followed by uh, annual increases ranging from five to 8% in the, the four year period that follows. Um, yeah, these rate increases are uh, what we're projecting. They will be able to fund our uh, escalating cost of operations, our debt service obligations, as well as capital projects and in the short term, transfers to the township um, for uh, to uh, until um, until the current fund can uh, be balanced on its own. Um, the the proposed rate increase would affect the average residential water and sewer customer on the water by uh, on the water side. It would be about a fifteen dollar. 73 cent increase per quarter. On the sewer side, it'd be about a $33.22 cent increase per quarter. Um, I will point out again, these water rates, the water rates haven't been increased since 2007. The sewer rates were last updated in 2006. Uh, this, this increase that we're talking about for the initial one is the, it's about the equivalent of if we were to had raised rates about two to two and a half percent every year, um, you know, from 2006 or 2007, this is about the equivalent of that. But unfortunately, we're in the position right now where we're playing a lot of catch or we're playing catch up. Um, the now what we did is we also compared the tw this proposed 2020 rates to other local municipalities uh, in the area. Um, now, the on the water side, we're we're still very low compared to our neighboring towns. Um, out of the selection that I picked, I think we were still the third lowest. Uh, on the sewer side, we fell pretty much in the lower half of of the the sample that I picked, and um, and this is so. What we're proposing is, uh, you know, is still on the low side compared to our neighboring towns. Um, that is, that's the synopsis of the reports that we presented to the township. Um, are there any questions from the board that I can help answer as far as the reports or the recommendations? Uh, yeah, uh, I have a question. Rob? Yes. Uh, this is uh, Councilman uh, Um, the numbers you gave us at the beginning, uh, when you took about a 39% increase right off the bat and then 6 to 8% over the next five years. So that would mean, theoretically, it, would, it could be a potentially a 79% increase over the next five years. Total. Uh, so we're doing, yeah, so I, what we're, I, I guess, I, when you're talking about the, uh, the overall at the end of, at the end of the five-year period, Yes, uh, I, I I believe so. I haven't run those. I haven't run that that overall figure, but you know, certainly, you know, we certainly would need to get, uh, yeah, you know, get there to catch up. 
Yeah, you would take 39% right away and then six to 8% for five years. So yes. if it was the top 8% times five would be 40%. So that would be a total of 79% increase in five years. Uh, and again, certainly I can, I can run those figures. That's, um, and, and we'll do so now. This is uh, Council Member Peterson. Do you have a dollar value that that translates to to the average household over the course of the year? Um, I do. Uh, well, no, I, I'm sorry. By quarter. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah, so, you, uh, could I just ask that you turn down the volume? Just we're getting some feedback. Um, maybe just turn it down just a tad bit. Uh, I, is this, uh, I'm sorry, you keep reading. That's that right. Yeah, that's good. That's better. Just because uh, I guess we're getting feedback and I think it's coming from your mic. So if we can just uh, ask you to turn it down just a tad bit. All right, we'll do. Um, Thank you, Rob. I appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. Is that, is that a bit better, everyone? That's much better. Okay. All right. Um, so for the average, for the average uh, user, uh, you'd be looking at a total bill on the water side of $168. Um, on the sewer side, you'd be looking at uh, $473 uh, per year. So the annual increase um, is uh, it's going to be for this initial 2020 year. Well, uh, annualized, it's $195 increase, but we're only initially talking for, um, you know, it would affect these the first half of the year. So really for this year, it'd be uh, 97 and 98 dollars uh, for your average your the average household for both parties. Cap Councilwoman Grignani. Yes. Uh, in your proposal that you uh, that we received on discussion points. Yes. You have an average quarterly bill of $40.33. Correct for uh, uh, currently for water, yes. Okay, and you're asking for a residential quarterly average change of fifteen dollars and seventy three cents, which comes to a total of fifty six dollars and six cents. Correct. Times four comes to two hundred and twenty four dollars and twenty four. We'll see. I. So the fifteen seventy three and the thirty three twenty two is one hundred ninety five. Uh, I'm not talking, sir. I'm not talking about the thirty three dollars. I'm oh. talking about the water bill specifically. You're telling okay. me the average of forty dollars and thirty three cents plus the fifteen dollars and seventy three cents comes out to fifty six dollars and six cents times four for the year is two hundred and twenty four dollars and twenty four cents. That's plus correct. The, yes. All right. Plus the four hundred and seventy-three dollars for sewer comes out to six hundred and ninety-seven dollars and eighty-four cents for a resident for the year. Am I getting those numbers correctly, sir? Those are. That is correct. Okay. Now, I make mention of the ordinance. The ordinance for the sewer has a single family and multi-family residential dwelling $71 per quarter. So what are we talking about? $71 or $33.22? So, yeah, so so what we're discussing, the, the difference, um, I, what the figures that you're looking in, in the, uh, the, the presentation is based on the average bill uh, for yeah, for the average water user, so that would include not only residential, but also it averages in uh, apartments. It, it, this would be the average, the average household. Okay, but what is the figure? Is the figure thirty three dollars and twenty two cents or seventy one dollars? That's that is in our uh, that's in our ordinance. Um, and I'm, uh, I apologize. I'm just scrolling down on the ordinance here. Um, okay. Maybe, it's on maybe, page yes. two. It's on page two. Yeah. And it's got section one, the third, the third, uh, the third. Almost. 
Okay. Uh, now, would this be something maybe we could bring up on the on the screen? I, I apologize. Uh, let me let me read that to you, please. Sure. It's section uh, one, chapter three twenty nine. We're going to bring it up on the screen right now. Fine. As we're reading it, so I just want to. We'll, we'll bring it up, and then once it's up, we'll go ahead and. Uh, Give us just one moment while we uh, transition here. Okay, here it is. There it is. Uh, at this point, if you can just point out to where, uh, what, what portion should we bring it up uh, for uh, for Rob to look at? It's in our ordinance, our ordinance for the sewer, and it's section one. Oh yes, uh, so I yeah, I'm. Here we go. Section one, paragraph three. Single. Family and multifamily residential dwelling, seventy-one dollars a quarter. You just mentioned thirty-three dollars and twenty-two cents. So which one is it? Well, the, th the thirty-three dollars and twenty-two cents is the the change in the average billing. So the average billing for sewer, even though we're proposing. Uh, having the rate increase to seventy-one dollars per single user for a single-family user, the average user under this would be would be paying about one hundred eighteen dollars per quarter, and some of that has to do with uh, uh, you know different different amounts of usage on this. Um, yeah, again, we're, we're basing that on average. That thirty-three dollar twenty-two cents is actually just a change in the average between the the previous average on the uh, the quarterly bill versus the um, the proposed average. Well, that done. I still don't know. I'm, I'm still not following you, okay? But then the other thing I want to mention is if we go over our usage on water and sewer, <coughs> there are going to be additional charges. How much are we actually charging our residents? They could be paying a substantial amount more than what they're paying now. I understand the rates have to be raised, but this is ludicrous, the amount of money that is being asked for right now. Okay? Why wasn't, if we knew this was happening, why didn't the administration increase our sewer over a period of these past three years? Plus, this survey was done, or this study was done in March, why are we just getting it now in July? Um, can I, can I, can I, can I, if I may, through the, through the council president, um, and I'm getting a little feedback, so I hope you can hear me. Um, first of all, I, I'll just call the council's attention to the fact that last year the administration did recommend a 2% increase in both water and sewer. Um, understanding the um, structure of last year, um and speaking candidly you know with the fact that you know there was a municipal election to be held in november uh we went with a two percent recommendation uh that was not pursued i can't speak to what happened prior to my arrival here in october of 2018 uh, but the issue with regard to the rates is a seriously pressing issue and every month that goes by we run the risk of changing with having a shortfall in water and sewer in 2021. Uh, there was a memo that was issued to the council last year that projected the shortfall arriving somewhere in 2023 or 2024. And this report, which is much more comprehensive than the memo that was written last year, uh, projects that to be even sooner. With regard to the timing of the report being provided to council, uh, that was my decision. Uh, one, we were in the midst of the COVID-19 public health crisis, which became the priority above everything else that was happening in the township. Um, and secondly, I quite frankly did not want to make this report public 
uh, until the budget was approved uh, because I was concerned about the public receiving both the budget information and the water and sewer rate information simultaneously. Um, and that's, you know, this is a public meeting, so I have no problem saying that that was my decision um, as far as when to present this information to both the governing body and also to the uh, to the public at large. Councilwoman, uh, uh, council member uh, Janice McCarthy, I don't think this should come as a surprise to anyone because we've been talking about this for the past three years. And, uh, you know, I remember we had a meeting with uh, Ms. Avancia, uh early, I think in my first year on council, and he pointed out this issue uh, when we discussed uh, the sewer rates. So, you know, I don't think this should be a surprise to anyone. If I may add, Rob, I, I gave you those numbers at the beginning that it potentially could be a 79% increase over five yeah. years. Yes. Um, I just did some quick math. And if you compound those percentages over five years, the increase comes to over 104%. Uh, I think that's that's absurd to increase water and sewer over 104 percent over a five year period. That's you know uh, to me that's just that's crazy. Uh, can I? That's speak? not that's not what's happening. What's happening is we're paying right. what we should have been paying all along. So it's a bitter pill to swallow now, but it's not as though. Like a, a rational budget keeper in a household who had some foresight may have thought this bubble's going to burst. I should put aside some cash for when these rates go up. Now, most people don't do that, myself included, because we're not that fiscally responsible or whatever the reason is. We're trying to live our lives. It doesn't make it less of a reality that without intense action, the fund will be empty. And so we can look at it on a micro level of how this impacts everybody from the dollars and cents over a period of time. But the macro vision here is we're going to be out of money and maybe it's worth outlining a little bit of what does it look like when there's no money? Well, and again, council, council member McCarthy, um, you know, I think it was early this year that, you know, I pointed out in a discussion that, uh, Fiscal policies, um, sound fiscal policies generate sufficient revenue through taxes and fees and grants. And Parsippany, on the other hand, was operating with the deficit. And instead of raising sufficient revenue to cover expenses and taxes, it relied on utility surplus and consistently increasing the amount of the surplus without raising the fees. Matter of fact, I think 2010. Fees were lower. That's just not sustainable. I'm That's sorry. Like constant. I'm sorry, That's Janet. Like Need somebody to be muted. Everybody, please be muted because when she's speaking, we're getting feedback. I apologize to cut you off, Janice. Please, everybody, mute your microphones when you're not speaking, so we don't get the feedback. Well, okay. So just to repeat, I said that when you generate sufficient revenues, you generate them through taxes, grants, and fees, and that didn't happen. And that didn't happen for like six or seven years. You know, so we were operating using the source surplus and transferring increasing amount of funds to the operate to the current fund. And that's what we did. So, as Emily pointed out, that's not sustainable. And it, it comes to fruition now, you know, it's like, it's like a debt, your credit card debt. When you bar borrow and borrow and borrow at some point, you have to pay that back. And unfortunately, now we have to pay it back. So we have to make some hard decisions. I guess that if we're not willing to do that, then then the fund will be depleted. Okay, anyone else? Yeah, if I can just uh, give a little history here. Prior to upgrading the sewer treatment plant, the rates we had were based on a, a, a electric bill that was 75% greater than it is now. So the rates were that we were charging were covering a huge expense in electric electricity. When we upgraded the sewer treatment plant and significantly reduced our electric bill, we had we what we were charging in the sewer rate 
was higher than we needed to operate the sewer plant. We decided to give that back to the residents um, by shifting some of it over to the current fund, never to exceed the, the project fund balance. We, and that was, the, that was the rule that we used for many years, not to exceed the fund balance so we could recoup whatever we transferred <coughs> in the following year. We had a surplus. That would benefit the Parsippany taxpayers. If we simply reduced the rate at that point in time, because our rate was higher than the cost at that time, then we would also be reducing the rate for all the commercial properties and all the townships that we have, that we that use our sewer treatment plant. Rather than give it to the commercial properties and, and the other towns, by, by transferring some of that into our current fund, we benefited, directly benefited, the Parsippany taxpayers and not the others. That worked fine for a few years, okay? Uh, but we could never, we should never exceed the fund balance um, in any utility. And, and that's the rule that we broke that got us into trouble, I believe. I'd like to talk here for a second. The other thing that happened was that the usage had started to drop off as well. Okay, so that is like a double whammy. Not only weren't the rates high enough, but the usage started dropping down for efficiencies and things like that. And for the sewer plant and the water, we ended up taking on more ordinance and, and capital and debt because of the failing water system. I mean, that's just on the water side. So it's it's like the perfect storm coming together. And the problem is that we need to do something quickly because your your fund balance right now has has dropped significantly and we don't want to have a problem in 21 and going forward just like emily was talking about it's not that in the past that i believe that we weren't spending the the money as we needed to be on the capital projects and with the new regime that had come in with joe beckmeyer and 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 Wawarka, they started really doing a lot of new things and the and coa hasn't helped it either we have to do, a, as you know, how many ordinances did we pass last year to fix the wells? Okay, so my, it's it's a whole combination of things, and and this has to happen. I, I, you know, it sounds big, it sounds bad, but I have to tell you, we're still in the very bottom of the list in the and the in the county in terms of our rates. Not that we want to raise them that high, and it sounds terrible, but it's still a really good deal. Okay, and I, I, I encourage you to do this. And I know it sounds bad, but you have to do this for your residents, for the residents. Through, 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 your, through, your, council, through your council president, if I may, um, I, to, to Councilman Karifi's point, and, and I understand that this may seem drastic all at once, but as I started off the presentation this afternoon, Rates have not been adjusted since 2006. And to the council president's point, when it came to sewer, they were actually last adjusted downward, not upward. And if you would have, and listen, we, we can't go, we can't turn back the hands of time. I appreciate that. Um, however, if similar to the municipal budget, you kept on a 2% trajectory over those 14 years where the where the rates remain static, you would have been adjusting the rates by approximately 2.7% per year. Um, had that been done over the last 14 years, we wouldn't be having this conversation. And unfortunately, by not making those adjustments, and I'm not trying to be critical of anybody here, I don't know how much this was even talked about over that you know decade and a half, so to speak, but, had that been done and kept on pace, you would not have to have you would not have to make this critical decision that's before you tonight uh, with the report from the Wilcots firm. So I, I just want to point out that you know this is a compounding issue. The municipal budget, you know, separate and apart from the utilities, you know, it's good fiscal practice in New Jersey to stick to that two percent cap, that limitation, so that your cap doesn't get restricted. Uh, if you lower the increase by less than 2%, because that's the effect that the, that the law has. Um, the same can be applied to the, to the sewer and water rates. 
Um, you know, your contractual obligations to your employees, which are paid exclusively through these utility funds, exceed the 2% cap. They exceed the 2% cap for, for blue collar based on the guide that the council approved uh, in order to, um, and the administration negotiated in order to compensate the, the rank and file blue collar employees. And we settled at slightly over 2% for the uh, supervisors uh, across the board, including those at sewer and water. So just in your employee costs are going up more than 2%, yet the rates have stayed stagnant, you know, for, for nearly 15 years. So I just want to point that out for, for can, I make a, uh, can I make a suggestion if it's possible? I mean, I, I get all of that. Um, is it possible, especially this year in particular with the, the virus and the pandemic and everything going on, is it possible to reach the end goal but instead of such a major increase right off the bat, maybe spreading it out over seven or eight years, but still reaching the goal over that time, but not just such a, a dramatic hit right off the bat. Rob, what's your analysis of that? Um, unfortunately, I no. Um, and this is something you, you notice that we we did a, the 39% increase, but and then we we still have somewhat larger increases for the following years. You know, five percent, um, uh, you know, ranging between five to uh, five to eight percent. Uh, we tried a number of scenarios here. The issue is that we're, uh, yeah, I think if we had this conversation last year, that would have been an that would have been a, a real possibility of of uh, spreading out this hit a bit more. Um, how we saw is that 2021 we're in we're in a very critical area which you know really is just it's six months away um so that's unfortunately the the answer is i i don't believe so no we we, we did not we we thought 39 percent was pretty much the lowest that we could do to meet to meet these obligations going for next year i was going to ask the same kind of question but a different way from Paul, um, you know, if you have a pie, there are different ways you can cut the pie uh, to reach 100% of the pie eventually. Um, so my question would have been, instead of a 39% increase now, um, a 20% increase uh, with a 6 or 7 or 8% the following year, cut the pie up differently so it's not a big amount to choke everybody this first year. I would um, make the case that the pie hasn't been cut for 14 years. That's the benefit. No one had to take any cuts for 14 years. I'm not saying that this isn't an intense thing, but let's not. I, I just want to stress we cannot isolate this in time. No one took an increase for 14 years. Yeah, and I I think the in any other situation you would have other mechanisms um you know the, another mechanism would be maybe borrowing from the the current fund um but i i don't i think my understanding is that a lot of these options have been exhausted you know right now our current fund is borrowing from these or, or being funded through these utilities so i'm not sure if um uh, I'm, I'm not sure if we have that option okay. We do not have that option. Okay. Do if we have no one else uh, from the council administration that wants to comment, then I'm going to go ahead and uh, go and move on to the public portion of the meeting. Uh, clerk. Yes, ma'am. Uh, look. It, it, oh, I'm sorry, Janice. Do you want to speak first, and then I'll I'll speak. Go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to ask Ann if she could tell us what the fund bill and balance is now. Is there any is there anything left? Well, here's the thing. What happened because the increase in costs in the water and the sewer operating to just fund the water and the sewer operating budgets, forget about the current fund. We needed to use much, much more of, of their individual fund balance. For example, this year in the water, we needed to use 2.3 million <coughs> own savings to be able to just stay alive in the water, okay, to be balanced in the water uh, fund. 
And the sewer fund, which we used to just use a million or a million and a half, this year, just to get through, we had to use 3.366 million. So you can see what's happening. Forget about the current fund. In the sewer fund itself and the water, they, the rates that you have right now are not enough to fund and take care of the operating of just the utility. And on top of that now, if you're going to fund the current, you're you're pretty much have exhausted almost all the fund balance. And and I'm not sure if you don't do this, and especially because we're six months through already. We're six months through the year. This calculation that Rob did and we worked on was calculated based on a full year, if I'm not mistaken. So I I, I get it with that it sounds like a lot and it and it feels like <laughs> a we're at critical mass like <laughs> like Emily spoke about. Uh, and I'm sorry yet. Yeah, and just one one correction there. Uh, Rob, it's well, up. I continue, I'm sorry. I need everybody who is not speaking to mute themselves. Uh, Jim, also, I need I need you to be on mute, and I think everybody else is on mute as well. But if you can please mute yourselves when you're not speaking, because then we get feedback. Go ahead, Rob. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, thank you. And, and I'm sorry. Just a quick correction. This uh, this study was based uh, calculated on the assumption uh, where that. The, the 2020 rates uh, were, this is based on a six month assumption. So it's something that if we do, um, uh, if the, uh, the township decides to adopt these new rates, um, the projection was done considering that it would be done just for these six months uh, for the year. So it's, it, it is, it's not a full year, it is just a half year for that first 2020 year. I realized that, however, I just don't know when I, when we talked about the calculation, how much of that's going to regenerate a uh, fund balance, Rob, that's all I was trying oh, to say. You know? no, I, I, very true. Very true. You know, and I think another issue, Anne, if I'm not mistaken, is, you know, we, we increased, uh, or we, we had more debt because we didn't have we couldn't use those surpluses in the sewer fund so you know it's sort of like there's a chart there's a you know more expense there too for the taxpayer to pay off the the debt right using the credit card instead of cash right janice right right, right. well i think also that um our new beckmeyer joe beckmeyer has been doing a lot of good projects up there that needed to be done for many, many years up at the sewer plant, there were a lot of great ideas and none of those were happening. And then when Joe got there, they started really doing these, these improvements and things that needed to be done on a maintenance level. And on the water side, you have the other problem that you know the wells are dry, dried up and we're regenerating those and trying to get ready for COA. So all of this it makes a difference and yeah you do we can't fund it through fund balance we have to fund it through debt and ideally over time we would like to pay for some of these things through through operating but right now that's not happening so yes we have incurred more debt and we will for the next few years anyone else yes now again like like i had alluded to in the way Councilman uh, Councilmember McCarthy was uh, was saying that uh, we've basically been using the credit card instead of paying cash on this, as it were, and to be keep it in very simple house, household terms, and uh, paying paying it off and paying interest on you know capital projects that we've had to do instead of just paying it straight out with cash is costing us money in the long run, and that's something that has concerned me from the beginning. But uh, just on another thing, this is. I, I get Paul's Councilman Karifi's hesitancy because this is this is a tough pill to swallow, and I I, I see that, um, I I feel it too. But just understand at least the way I see it. I mean it's 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 easy to do the popular thing. You know the 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 thing that'll you know make everyone go hip hip hooray, but it's it's harder in this case to do the right thing. It's this is going to be hard for us as leaders, as elected officials here. This is going to be rough to do, and I understand that. But just because it's the hard thing to do does not mean it's not the right thing to do. So um, keep asking your questions. Let's let's go back and look at this. Okay, we have some tough decisions to make, and uh, 
I am sensitive to the fact that all five of us, and my, me included being six, have a very tough decision to make on this. And uh, what is there I'm to go back and be you, looked at? We need to do the right thing. No, meaning like the the before you vote. Okay, anybody else for a discussion? Okay, uh, seeing that there's no one else for discussion, uh, we are now going to move to the public portion of this meeting. So uh, before we start the public portion, just wanna alert the public that um, in the bottom, you, you will have a raise hand icon, you raise your hand. Once I see you, you will be unmuted. You will have five minutes to speak. Please be advised, before you begin speaking, you need to give your name and address. If you do not give your name and address, you will be cut off. Uh, with that being said, uh, I now would like to entertain a motion to open up the public hearing. Make a motion. Motion. Second, Peterson. Okay, we have a motion made by uh, Mr. Carifi, seconded by Ms. Peterson. Roll call, Mr. Carifi. Yes. Ms. Grignani. Yes. Uh, Ms. McCarthy. Yes. Ms. Peterson. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Okay, at this time, I'm opening the floor up to the public. Uh, please, once you raise your hand and we, and we see that your hand is raised, uh, you will be unmuted and given five minutes to speak. Okay. At this point, I have a Mr. Uh, Richard, I believe, uh, Young it is. Uh, we will go ahead and unmute you. Mr. Richard Young, you're unmuted now. You can go ahead and speak. Please identify your name and address. My name is Richard Young. I live at 179 Interville Road in Parsippany. I'd like to thank you all for your service and uh, recognize the difficulty of what is before you. Uh, as the mayor was saying a little bit ago, it is hard to do the right thing. And I think the situation that you see before you is the result of people not doing the right thing for a very long period of time. Uh, clearly, uh, one of the ways that we as citizens uh, were reassured that the township budget was kept in balance now appears to be that funds were siphoned off from the water and sewer utility. So perhaps the focus of this needs to be turned back around to the township and to where elsewhere in the township budget that funds can be transferred back to the water and sewer utilities, not siphoned out of the pockets of the taxpayers especially at the rate that's being suggested here. A 39% increase over one year in a meeting that's held at four o'clock on a business day is a little unconscionable. I think the timing of this doesn't really complement the high level of accomplishment and of uh, attitude that we would expect from our town council. Not really very good to put us out this way. I think, as Mr. Carifi was kind to say, uh, we are in the middle of a pandemic and the economic impact on many of us has been beyond meaningful. Uh, having something as ridiculous as a 39% increase because somebody didn't recognize this problem and work it through the years is unconscionable. I believe you should consider those points as you look at it. I think also you should uh, work a bit more closely or have the um, appropriate supervisors within the water and sewer department look a bit more closely at things that really are crises and require capital investment at this time, as opposed to things that can be stretched out in time or renegotiated. I'd appreciate your care as you look forward at this. Thank you so much. Thank you for your comments, uh, Mr. Young. Um, do we have anyone else that is uh, would like to speak during the public portion? I haven't seen any raised hands yet. I will wait just a few seconds to see if anyone um, would like to speak. Can I just say uh, in response to Mr. Young's question, I, I'm, I'm not sure that this is a result of not recognizing that this was a problem. For as long as I've been serving here, I have heard this is going to be a problem. This is going to be a problem. This is going to be a problem. And now here we are with the problem. I can't account for the decade plus prior to my arrival, but I'm, I don't think that it was naivety that led us to this point. Okay, do we have any other member from the public? I don't see any member raising their hand. So, um, 
At this time, seeing no one else from the public, I would like to entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Make a motion. Second. Second, Peterson. Okay, I need. I have a motion from Mr. Carifi, seconded from Ms. McCarthy. A roll call, Mr. Carifi? Yes. Ms. Grignani? Yes. Uh, Ms. McCarthy? Yes. Ms. Peterson? Yes. Mr. DePiro? Yes. The floor is closed. Uh, so at this time, uh, we are now going to move into the executive session where we're going to be discussing personnel matters related to the finance department. I want to let the public know that there is going to be no action to be taken. Uh, we will not be seen or heard at the time we go into executive session. However, we will come back out into the public to adjourn, but I do want to let the public know that no action will be taken after the executive session. Uh, thank you for your attendance and your comments. Uh, at this time, I'm going to go ahead and read the resolution for the executive Hello. Yes. Excuse me. I just want to say thank you to everyone. I'm going to step off um, and I feel the same way Keith does. Um, so thank you all for everything. And it's been a real pleasure to work with everyone. And I am also going to be here for any transition. I encourage you to be open to the person who you're going to speak to. He's a very good friend um, of mine as well. And um, I look forward to, if, if it's acceptable, of course, to you. I look forward to working with him similar to what Keith's going to do is for as long as it takes. So I'm going to stop drop off and have a good night, everybody. Bye, Ann. All right. Thank you, Ann. Bye, Ann. Um, this is Rob McNinch. I, take care, everyone. I'm going to drop off as well. Thank you, Ann. Thank you. All right. I'm going to go ahead and read thank the. You, Rob. Uh, all right, thank you. I'm going to go ahead and read the executive session resolution now. Uh, whereas the Open Public Meetings Act, PL 1975, Chapter 31, permits the exclusion of the public from a meeting in certain circumstances, and whereas the Township Council is of the opinion that such circumstances presently exist, and whereas the Township Council wishes to discuss personnel matters related to the Finance Department, and whereas minutes will be kept, and once the matter involving the confidentiality of the above no longer requires confidentiality, the minutes will be made public. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Township Council of the Township of Sipony Troy's Hills that the public be excluded from this meeting. I need a motion to adjourn into public session and to, into closed session. Take motion, Peterson. Okay, motion made by Mr. Cariffi, seconded by Ms. Peterson. Roll call, Mr. Cariffi? Yes. Ms. Grignani? Yes. Um, Ms. Um, Ms. McCarthy? Yes. Ms. Peterson? Yes. And Mr. DePiro? Yes. Okay, we're now going to go ahead and to go into executive session. You guys stay signed down. We're going to put you into executive session. You're on mute. Sorry, I apologize. Um, we're now back in open session. We now need a motion to reconvene into open session, please. Thank you. Second, Loretta. Okay, motion made by Mr. Carippi, seconded by Ms. Grignani. Roll call, Mr. Carippi. Yes. Ms. Grignani? Yes. Ms. McCarthy? Yes. Ms. Peterson? Yes. Mr. DePiro? Mr. DePiro? Mr. DePiro? Okay, seems like we might have technical difficulties with Mr. DePiro, but we have, we have four votes to go into open session. Okay, being that we're in open session, I need a motion to adjourn the meeting. Make a motion. Motion made by Mr. Uh, Cariffi, seconded by Ms. Peterson. Roll call, Mr. Cariffi. Yes. Ms. Grignani? Yes. Ms. McCarthy? Yes. Ms. Peterson? Yes. Mr. DePiro? Okay, Mr. DePiro, it seems like we're having technical difficulties, but we do have the four votes. We have a quorum to have adjourned. So I'm going to wish everyone a good night, and uh, we will touch base later on. Thank good night, you. everyone. Go ahead. Right. Go ahead. Yes. Cheers, Michael. Can I, I have a, can you, can I, I call you or you call me, I have a question. Yeah, I'll call you right now. Okay, thanks. All right, have a good night, everyone. Good, good night. night.